I will now demonstrate some of the features of the Uniface web component in the 9.4 beta. The first thing we'll look at is painting a web component. To create a component, we start by picking the component type. In this case, I'll pick DSP. And we can see we have the two editors. We have the layout editor and the structure editor. So I'll start off by inserting an entity. This is very similar to creating a service in Uniface. Now prior to Uniface 9.4 you would have started by creating the layout and then doing a synchronization to create your entities and structure information. In the 9.4 beta demo we can just paint the structure directly. And I can do a normal load fields. I'll now paint a second entity. and paint some buttons. Add some code and just set the widget types. So that's my structure created. I'll now create my layout. Go to my component, right click and say copy as HTML. I then get a wizard that allows me to pick which fields I want to copy across. In this case I'll pick everything. I'll go for the horizontal table style, say OK. Right click, paste and that's my layout created. I can now compile the component and run it. And test it. Make a change. We'll now look at the binding attributes. If we take a look at the source tab, we can see the binding attributes that have been used. Binding is carried out through the use of the ID tag against the HTML elements. On this line, we can see we've bound the Uniface entity district.address. If we look at this label, we can see that again we're using the ID tag to bind the label to this element. And again, it's id.districts.address. If I go down further, we can see that this input box is bound to the field id.district.address. The naming is similar to what we used to see with the X tags. In this case, we're just using HTML standard ID tags. Note that USPs do still use the X tags. The other advantage that using standard XHTML brings is that we can use any XHTML editor we choose. If I do copy as HTML here, again, select all in this case and say OK. I could then go to my external editor, in this case Notepad, do a paste and we can see that my information is there with the standard bindings. We will now look at some of the widget properties. DSPs utilize a number of rich widgets. These widgets at first appear to be standard HTML widgets, but they are actually using RIA equivalents. If 
If we take a look at the properties of the widgets, we can see we've got an extended property window with a number of tabs with many properties. Syntax tracking is now enabled on a field by field basis and is no longer done with a separate Java applet. I can demonstrate this in action on the ID field. We can see that the ID field is numeric. If I run the page and enter letters into the numeric ID field, a rear dialog pops up saying a legal format for a numeric field. I will now use the attribute only widget to apply a background color to the table header. The attribute only widget allows me to apply attributes to any HTML element on the page. I'll start by painting a field. I'll call it at one. Set the widget type to attributes only. Go through to the properties and I'll set the background color to blue. Now something to note here is that these properties are readable names. If we click show physical names we can see what they actually refer to. So in the case here we have style colon background color so that means Uniface is going to set the background color CSS style. Now these are actually Uniface properties not CSS properties. The naming standard though tries to match the names in CSS to keep things consistent and easy for the developer. Other properties, for example some HTML properties are prefixed with HTML. So HTML class for example allows you to specify the class attribute on the HTML tag. Again, bear in mind, these are actually Uniface property names, but the naming matches HTML or CSS standards. Okay, so I've set the background color to blue. All I now need to do is bind this attribute to a element on the HTML page. And to do that, I just right click, say copy as HTML, pick this individual field I want and in this time I just want to get the binding information so I pick binding information in plain text click OK go to my layout go to the source and here's my table header element that I want to set that background color on so edit paste and it pastes in my binding information compile that, refresh and we can now see that that background color has changed. The next set of properties control the Ajax behavior. If we go to the triggers of the button we can see that the detail trigger has a default value. If we look at the options we have async update, sync update and full page. Async update means it will be a standard asynchronous JavaScript request i.e. you can fire that request and the user can still continue doing things on the page until the response comes back. A sync update will mean that the user can submit their request but has to wait for the response before they can continue doing anything. Full page is used for navigation so if you want to navigate to another DSP or potentially a USP you'd use full page. So I'll demonstrate sync update. So I still have my sleep in the retrieve button. So when I press this, the synchronous update is now not letting me do anything until I get the response. Demonstrate it one more time. It's busy. It's not letting me do anything because I've said synchronous and then I get my response.